Um, and also thanks for the other David, because he gave somehow a good starting point for what I'm talking today. Um, and I'm making it a little bit more concrete, a bit concrete. So I'm talking about carbon and carbon removal, but not in a bigger sense, but uh, very much connected to energy. Um, and um, the energy space is, um, I think, in, in everybody's press at the moment. And I just wanted to f uh, maybe ask a little question. Who knows about the married order in our energy markets? The married order. Okay, I, I thought it's a bit more because it was, let's say, up, going up and down in, uh, in at least the German press of how our energy markets are operating and how much of an energy crisis we actually have at the moment, um, which are caused somehow by, let's say, we talk uh, natural gas or gas-fired power plants we're having. Um, and uh, the combination of these is, um, is something which is... Um, which gives it quite a good opportunity because it gives a market signal uh, into all of these different assets who produce energy uh, to the energy markets. Um, and at the moment, we talk a lot about uh, demand flexibility, let's say, how do we actually utilize energy in a, in a flexible manner? But we can also spin that around and look at the production space, like how do we actually produce energy from renewable resources which, to bring them a little bit closer to our uh, demand patterns we all have in our societies, in our private households, but also in our industries. Um, and the good thing here, there's actually two things coming together, which are hardly coming together uh, usually in, let's say, in business. Um, and what you can see here, uh, it's on the vertical, it's uh, carbon intensity, and on the X axis, uh, on the horizontal, is, the, is the, um, the value of the energy connected to, let's say, the price point we're achieving. So what you can see, and a lot of people say differently, but renewable energy is actually pushing uh, let's say, the, the price signal down in the married order, right? So the more renewable power plants we operate in our energy systems, um, the lower the energy price we're paying, right? That's good to understand. A lot of people say that differently. Um, but what is actually connected to that is the lower price points, they actually come from renewables. They also come with hardly any carbon intensity as well. So it's a, it's a very nice combination of of, of, let's say, uh, low price points and low carbon emissions when we bring more renewables to the table, more renewables to our, let's say, energy systems. But they have a big problem, uh, the intermittency of our wind and solar resources, right? Um, there's obviously, at the moment, there's quite some sunny days in, in Hamburg and also across Germany, which is good, right? We don't, we don't always have that. Um, and then the same with wind. So if we can somehow not really predict on how wind and solar will behave on the longer term, uh, we can also not really connect our demand schemes to that. Um, so if we, but if we, we have the opportunity to actually come from both sides, right? To look into demand flexibility and then also to make uh, renewable assets um, a little bit more flexible. Um, and that's what we're doing in S Renewables. We are a Hamburg-based startup. Um, and yes, we are taking uh, data and AI into the prediction of, uh, of resources and then how to connect them to uh, the markets we're operating in. And you can see this is actually quite a uh, complicated undergoing. Uh, if you see the, the top graph, it gives you the intermittency of uh, wind and solar. And to be honest, you can see that the, the solar part is a little predictable. So you can see, let's say, yeah, the sun goes up and it will reach the peak uh, solar irradiance um, over daytime. Um, and it will go down again, but wind is a little bit um, less predictable. And in, co in connection to that, you see the reflection of the energy market. So on the lower graph, you can see how the production volume from solar and wind is pushing out all of the conventional power plants, right? So whenever uh, the CO2 signal or the price signal is very low, then there's so much renewable uh, energy in the market, then there's hardly any conventional power plant left. So the uh, CO2 portion of that hour is very little, um, and also the price point is very little. So whenever uh, we focus on low price energy, we're also focusing on very low carbon intensity energy. Um, and with that, we need to see how we can actually utilize the, the resource in a manner to shift it into a production profile which fits, which fits best to, let's say, our demand. Um, and that's what we're doing. So we're not just converting the resources into energy, but we, we, we're trying to convert it in a fashion that is somehow best fit to our demand schemes we have any different market zones. This is the market zone of Germany, and obviously uh, this is all different. I don't know how, how well are you aware of, of, of all of this. Germany, for example, only has one market zone, um, so it's across the same, across uh, 
the north of Germany and Bavaria, and we all have a different idea of how the market should behave and how much more nuclear power plants we should have. But, um, but in the end, North Germany actually uh, reduces the energy price for Bavaria as well, um, which is not a problem for us, but I think for Bavaria sometimes. Um, and um, so um, in other markets, for example, Norway, Sweden, Italy, also they broke, they're broken up in very little chunks, and they have more dedicated zones, uh, which is at the moment a discussion in Germany. And let's see how that um, will uh, resolve uh, moving forward. But what you can actually see um, in the past, when we looked at a, as a resource profile, we looked at it more from an annual space. We said there's a certain good wind speed available, but that somehow is very hard to somehow uh, connect to uh, the demand pattern we have. So we actually need to change the resolution. And now be things become very complicated because we actually need to now understand how wind and solar will behave for the next 20, 25, 30, 35 years on an hour US solution. And it's not only wind, it's also all of the connections to that. It's temperature, it's uh, wind shear, let's say how the wind speed is changing over hub height, um, and also turbulence intensities, etc. And it's the same with solar, because only then we can actually connect it to the energy market. So in this case, um, for example, uh, running a project across 25 years, it's 219,000 hours we need to simulate and then connect to an offtake pattern uh, in the energy market. And you can see this is somehow possible now, but it wasn't really possible in the past because this is, new only, this is not only data, uh, this is also a lot of physical models uh, in between, which we somehow replace with surrogates in, in order to somehow make that uh, uh, um, a run which, com which can compute and be done a stock after a couple of hours of, um, of running here. And actually a very um, um, concrete example, I think things like this are easier to understand when you can somehow connect to it, right? So, I think a lot of you have seen solar panels installed like on the left, right? Uh, which you usually see when you drive on the Autobahn here in, in Germany. They're usually installed like this, um, uh, close to the Autobahn. And you can actually see they, are, um, they have no tracker solution. They are purely facing south um, and have a fixed uh, tilt angle connected to it. Um, and um, in Germany, we also, we're pretty good at measuring everything. Uh, we have a Markenstammregister here in Germany. And about 80% of all solar installations in Germany are just like the ones on the left. Um, and actually now what happens if we have solar panels installed, which, all this, which, which are all the same, they have a very similar production pattern, right? They all produce energy at the same time, at the same peak, with the same, let's say, profile connected to it. Um, but then in comparison to that, and there's a lot of agro PV, let's say, PV coming up, which is somewhat suitable also for farming. And vertical PV is quite an interesting topic here. It's a, it's a bifacial uh, solar panel which, which stands vertically, and you can actually uh, farm uh, crops, etc., in between. Um, and they actually take the sun from the east and from the west. And with that, obviously, there must be a different uh, pattern behind this. And if you look in this um, in more in detail, you can actually see now what's happening. On the very left, you see um, for um, uh, like a, a normal summer, summer day, like a day where the sun is shining, uh, you see the, the resource pattern of the solar radiance picking up over noon. Uh, and you can see also the behavior of the market. So what is the market actually signaling back uh, on that behavior? So whenever there's a lot of solar volume being in production, you can see the market drops. Uh, and with that, back to the first picture, um, the price point drops, but also the CO2 equivalent drops quite a lot. And then if you convert this solar radiance with your standard uh, south-facing panel, you actually just create a copy of that uh, with um, uh, energy volume. Um, but now, uh, when you actually then look into the, uh, the south, um, no, the east and west facing bifacial vertical PV, you can see that we can control it differently. So we can stretch the pattern more broadly, and we can produce more energy in the early hours and in the late hours uh, when we actually all get home. Um, so you can see there is still a lot of opportunities in, let's say, how do we deploy uh, renewable assets and renewable farms um, for the future. And with that, somehow having, let's say, the production uh, opportunity to actually optimize the profile for all of us. And on the other hand, if we become all more flexible on our demand side, uh, there will be a good uh, opportunity to actually meet the 24-7 green energy target we are looking for. Good. So far, um, from what we're doing and how we actually utilize AI and data to somehow make that happen, um, and uh, yeah, happy to discuss further if you have any questions or anything to talk about this.
Thank you.